It is a great day today to, to bring you the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Reverend Kinsley, and as always, I'm here to give you the word of the Lord. The name of this program is Men of Eternity. Men of Eternity. It is a platform that God is using to bless his people, to teach us things concerning the kingdom of God, to give us accurate understanding and correct dissection of the word of God. Hallelujah. Today I have a wonderful message for you, beloved. And the title of my message is After Born Again. After Born Again. You see, um, I was contemplating on what message to bring to you today when the Lord laid this on my heart that I should talk about this. Because um, so many times we are so much interested in bringing deep revelations and deep insight and sometimes we neglect the basics of the Christian faith, the basis of the Christian foundation. Hallelujah. So today the Lord has led me to give you this message to come and give you this simple message which i know is going to bless your life because so many of you after you got born again you are now in a place where you don't know what to do next you see most people after they get born again they they get they don't know what to do next so they keep um doing a try and error with the christian work and when it's not working they lose faith and decide that hey this thing cannot work for me let me just abandon this christianity thing and move on to another thing amen that is the reason why the Lord has laid in my heart to give you this message, to teach you what to do after you are born again. You need to understand what it means to be born again. You see, if you are going to start, if you are going to continue on that journey after you get born again, if you are going to continue in your work with the Lord, you need to understand what we mean by one is born again. It, is a, it has become a common term that everyone uses, hey, I'm a born again, I'm born again, but most people even don't understand or don't know what it means to be born again. Hallelujah. So, we are going to enter into our scripture and our lesson is going to begin. Amen. May the Lord help us, may the Lord give us grace, may the Lord open and quicken our understanding that we may know the mysteries of the kingdom and be able to do it in Jesus name. Amen. So the popular scripture when it comes to talking about the born again experience or the new Christian experience is 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse number 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse number 17. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new Christian. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So the Bible is saying that when one comes into Christ, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you used to do. It doesn't matter the kind of lifestyle you were living. The moment you come into Christ, the Bible says that you are a new creation. What does new mean? We need to, what does this mean? Let's look at the word new. When we say new it means it was not there before. It was not in existence before. It is something fresh something that has now begun to exist are you with me you see assuming you have a chair in your hall and um and in your living room and you decide to go throw it away discard it so that you can get a new one now when you discard that chair away and go to the computer shop or wherever you buy your furniture and you buy a furniture that furniture you bought is a new furniture it has no connection with the old one are you with me but assuming you like that chair so much, the old chair, you like it so much that you decide not to throw away, but you decide to make it uh, a do-over. Like you could take it to a carpentry shop and they change the leather, they change one or two things about the chair. Now, when you bring that chair back to your living room, it's not a new chair. It's the same old chair that you have re you've made a do-over it, you have rework it. Are you with me? But when it comes to the new creation, it is not the old nature it is not who we used to be that has been modified no the new christian experience the born again experience is no modification of our character it's no modification of our old ways no modification of our sins no it is the taking away of the signature so in the new christian experience who you used to be is not who you are now after you are born again when you make the moment you accept christ into your heart as your lord and personal savior instantly who used to be ceased to exist who used to be is destroyed and a new personality a new character a new life is given to you so that who you are now in christ has no connection or whatsoever to who you were before christ amen you see 
But the unfortunate aspect that after we get born again, when we look at our conduct, we look at the way we live, the way we talk, it looks as if we are still the same old person. And that is where people find it difficult. That is where people begin, even some become frustrated because they say, I'm born again, but look at what I'm doing. I'm still doing what I used to do. Am I not born again? Does that mean I'm still a sinner? No, you are not a sinner. You are born again. But it's because you are not being educated on your new life. You have not been educated on what you need to do now. That is why you are in that place where you think you are still not born again amen so this is the this is the reason for this message amen now i want you to know also that the moment you get born again your spirit man as a man you have three parts you have a spirit within you, you have a soul and you have a body the body is what you can see me with now hallelujah a spirit soul and body now the moment you get born again your spirit is instant instantly recreated are you with me your spirit is spirit is instantly made new it is pure and new amen now let's look at the book of ephesians the book of ephesians chapter number five ephesians number five no let's let's it's in a, a chapter four rather ephesians chapter four ephesians chapter four it says ephesians chapter four verse 24 it says and put in and that you put on the new man the new man so the new creation put on the new man the new creation who you are now put it on which is created according to god so the new man is created according to god uh -huh. in true righteousness and holiness so the moment you get born again the new man what is the new man your spirit your spirit is created in true righteousness and holiness. So, the moment you get born again, like I said, it is not a modification of your spirit. It is the making new of your spirit. So, the old spirit is destroyed and a new spirit is given unto you. Amen. So, the moment you get born again, you received a new spirit. And this new spirit, the Bible says that this new spirit, it is created according to God with two natures, true righteousness and holiness. So as a born again child of God, the first thing I want to let you know is that you are righteous and holy. Where? In your spirit. You are not righteous and holy in your conduct because even after you are born again, you still keep on lying, you still keep on committing sin, and you still falling short here and there. But your spirit, the Bible says your spirit, your new man is created in true righteousness and holiness. You see, before you get to walk in the Lord and before you begin to enjoy your Christian walk, you must have this understanding that your spirit is righteous and holy. Amen. Your spirit is righteous and holy. That's what the Bible says. See, the new man is created in true righteousness and holiness. Amen. So now that we are born again, my spirit is new. My spirit is holy. My spirit is fresh. It is clean. There is no sin in my spirit. But I find out that in my conduct, in the way I live, in the way I talk, it is as though I, it's, what, it's the, still the same as I used to be. So the question is, am I still a sinner? No, you are not a sinner. It is because you have not learned how to walk in your new nature, which is the righteousness and holiness. And that is the reason for this teaching. Amen. I'm not sure we'll be able to finish this today. Probably we'll continue in our next video. We'll take two, two videos to uh, take our time to explain this concept very well. Amen. Now, there's a scripture I also want you to understand. In Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verse 10. Romans chapter 8 verse 10, it says, And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. So, you see, when you get born again, you see, your physical appearance does not change. So, he said Christ is in you. Christ is in you, but your body is dead. Why is the body dead? Because there is still sin in the body. Like I said, when you get born again, it is your spirit part that becomes new. It is your spirit part that is called the new creation. 
If you are trying to look in your body, if you look into the mirror and trying to see that righteousness and holiness I'm talking about in your body, you will not see it. Because this righteousness and holiness I'm talking about, it is in your spirit, but not on your body. So in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 10, it says, If Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. So it means that even though you are born again, yet there is sin present with you. But where? In your body, not in your spirit. So sin is still present with us, even though we are born again. It is present in our body. And that is actually the reason why you keep on sinning. The sin you the sin you are committing is not because you are still a sinner. You are committing sin because there is still sin found in your body. Are you with me? So he says, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. The spirit, the spirit within you. So the spirit within you has received life. But the body is still full of sin. You see, you see, the body is, is uh, the spirit is life because of righteousness. So because your spirit has been created in true righteousness and holiness, you have life in your spirit. But when it comes into your body, you are still a sinner in your body. And that is the reason why born again Christians keep on sinning. Born again Christians keep on sinning not because they are sinners. It's not because they are born again. It's not correct. It's not because they are not born again. It is because there is sin still in their body. Amen. You see, in Romans chapter 7, Paul says something of, of similar. He says, mm, For Romans chapter 7 verse 17. Romans chapter 7 verse 17 says, But now it is not it is no longer I who do it, but sin that was in me. So he said, I am not the one doing it, but sin in me. I am not the one. So which I is he talking about? He's talking about I, the spirit man. The spirit man, I, I am not the one sinning, but still dwell in me. So you see, he, he, this is a very powerful statement. He is using, he said, I am not the one sinning. But sin is in me. Does that mean that Paul has pers uh, multiple personalities? No. Paul does not have my multiple personalities. He said, I am not the one sinning. But sin dwells in me. So we need to identify the first I and the second me. Now, let's continue. Romans chapter 7 verse 17 says, but, but now, it is no longer I who do it. But sin that was in me, verse 18, verse 18. For I know that in me, so that me, that is in my flesh. So he put a parenthesis, a bracket, and said, that is in my flesh. Nothing good was, for to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I find it not. So he said, it is no longer I that do it. So there is a part of him that is not sinning, but there is also a part of him that is sinning. And the part of him that is not sinning, a part of him that is not committing is the part of the spirit part, which is created in righteousness and holiness. But he went on to say that, but sin dwells in me. Then in the next verse, he explained or made a, gave us a deeper revelation of the me he's talking about that is in my flesh, the body. Amen. So when you even go down, when you come down a little to the verse 23, Romans chapter 7 verse 23 says, But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into the captivity of the law of sin, which is in my members. The members are talking about his body. So he is born again, but there is sin still in his body. The sin is still in the body. Because the sin is still in the body, he finds himself committing sin here and there, now and then. But the sin he's committing does not mean he's a sinner. It's because the sin is still in his body. But his, righteous, his spirit is righteous and holy. You see, when we get born again, our bodies does not get affected. Amen. Let's, 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 let's look at something here. Let's look at something here. In the book of um, First Corinthians, Hallelujah. First Corinthians, chapter fifteen, chapter fifteen, verse fifty-three. First Corinthians, chapter fifteen, verse fifty-three. Okay, let me start from um, verse fifty-two. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52 says, In a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, 
at the last trumpet, for the body will sorry, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has been put on incorruption, this mortality has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same that is swallowed in victory. You remember he said earlier on that death is in my body. So he says that verse 54, first Corinthians chapter 15, verse 54, he says that so when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Death is swallowed up in virtue where in our body. So you see, it is when Christ comes the second time that our bodies will be redeemed. Now, as a born again child of God, your spirit is redeemed, but your body is not redeemed, and your soul is not redeemed. Amen. So that is the reason why those you are born again, you find yourself still committing sin because there is death in your body. And the Bible is saying that when Jesus comes the second time, that trumpet, it is going to cause this body which contains sin, it is going to be changed into immortality so that death in your body will live. Then now, that victory, which is death has been swallowed up, will be complete in you. So that when you look at your spirit, you look at your soul and you look at your body, there is nothing like sin and there is nothing like death. Only when Christ comes. But for now, it is only your spirit that is born again. For now, it is only your spirit that is pure and holy. You need to understand this. You need to understand it. So today is an introduction of our message after born again. God will in our next video, will now go into practical terms how to walk as a born again child of God, how to walk with the holiness, how to walk in righteousness. For now, I just came to give information that you are clear, part man, trapatite being. You have a spirit, you have a soul, you have a body. And when you get born again, it's your spirit that is recreated, that is made new in righteousness and holiness. But there is still sin in your body. And your soul is also not saved when you get born again. It is your spirit that is saved. Hallelujah. My name is Reverend Kinsley, and this is the end of my message today. God willing, I'll bring you the second teaching, and I'll conclude the message. We'll take it time and take it in two parts. Amen. I want you to follow my page on Men of Eternity on Facebook. Subscribe to my channel on YouTube, Men of Eternity. Also, I have a personal page called Rabbi Kinsley Kakim. Kakim is C-H-A-K-K-I-M. It's also on Facebook. Follow that page, and the Lord will bless you. And make sure you click on the notification button when you subscribe on the YouTube channel, Men of Eternity. So that anytime I upload our message, you will receive a notification and you bless. Please share this message also to friends and loved ones and let them be blessed by this message. The Lord meets, the Lord keep you and the Lord watch over you. Until we meet again, peace be unto you.